Um, since I want to go down and mine some more, uh, I'm not going to be talking about the other topic quite yet, because it's, it's better for me to do that while I'm focusing on some stuff with the creepy trader. I'll, it's, that's, it'll show up. Um, but, 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 I'm just briefly hoping that's adamantine. Hold on, Tinny has found a cork. <clears throat> but the other thing I wanted to talk about was, well, I did briefly mention um, Rooster Teeth and the importance of that uh, company and, you know, what hap what's been happening with it over time. Uh, in uh, the previous episode, um, but I was like, ah, I'm not gonna be talking about it. It's uh, at least not now. And uh, I, I was going to continue that uh, until I noticed uh, that ten days ago, as I'm recording this, so it was weirdly. It was it September? Oh, sorry, October first. October first, first or second. Achievement Hunter up uploaded what is apparently going to be its final video. Um, it's uh, Jeff, Michael, uh, Trevor, and Jack playing Burnout Paradise and talking about, well, the good old days, I guess. Not not so much the good old days. They're, they're very reasonable about it. They're, they have fairly reasonable takes about, well, what, what constitutes the good old days in the first place, what people consider to be the golden days. Um, Jeff uh, brought up a great point in that video where the good old days, the, or rather the golden days, are always going to be different because they're always going to be the point in time when you got into it and you really fell in love with something. Oh, oh I love that. Someone going into the nether or some shit. Um, so, you know, if you fell in love with, achi uh, with Achievement Hunter's content in a certain year, then that year is going to be the golden age for you, or maybe just a little bit afterwards, and I kind of get that. Uh, I never really... I can't say with that channel that I necessarily had a golden age in my mind at any point. So I was always like... I'm, I'm fairly welcoming to change, I would like to think. Even though I am a fiend for nostalgia, I don't mind change. Uh, there are times when I'm like, okay, this is a, just straight up too different for me to consider it's really the same anymore. Uh, which has happened to some channels. Funhouse is a big one where it's not that it got worse, it just got too different from what I wanted out of that channel in the first place. Um, of course, Funhouse ended up being part of Rooster Teeth. Um, but yeah, they were talking about this. And it is, it is insane to think that I was, I was getting into Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter and everything as they uh, established Achievement Hunter, uh, sorry, established the Let's Play channel in 2013, right? I think it was 2013, like I, I remember quite vividly uh, watching the Switch happen while I was also getting into things like uh, Ruby and everything, and, and RVB and everything else Rooster Teeth had to offer. This was prior to them getting uh, bought by Full Screen and Warner. Uh, do I think that that was like a, oh, that's the turning point where everything fell apart? No. No, and the reason, well, there's, there's multiple reasons for that. Um, you know, starting with the fact that I don't necessarily think there were that many changes, and I think ultimately a lot of what changed... What even is this? Deep Iron, okay. <clears throat> a lot of what changed it was um, uh, the doing of people directly in the company as opposed to people all like, oh, way, way up high, like, see, massive CEOs of, of these big companies, because, again, something they bring up in this final Jimin Her video is that, well, most of those big executives have no idea what, who they are, or what they do, or uh, what's, what's going on, what even is this channel, because the only thing they really care about is the bottom line. And, uh, that's it. 
that or Calcum? Hey, more or Calcum, lovely. Well, let's see, yes, my sisters, please. Um, and it seems that, so despite everything else, that uh, Chima Hunter was still doing fine when it came to the bottom line. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, the, the other thing is, uh, it's, it's an unfortunate thing, but I'm just going to start by saying, uh, yeah, Rooster Teeth was part of an era in my life that's quite important, it's formative. It was my teenage years when I was starting getting to the, uh, getting into this channel, um, watched all their gaming content, was really a huge fan of like all these people, and was like, uh, they're very... I'm struggling to think of even uh, even late hires uh, to achievement harder that I didn't like. I, every edition I was like, Yo, this guy's pretty cool in this, There's this guy's uh, cool in that, so, but I was also kind of a contrarian, so <laughs> there is a part of it where um, the reason I liked certain uh, certain members of Achievement Hunter more when they started to first show up, before even people were really warming up to them, was because I saw that people were hating on them. And I was like, there's no reason to hate on them, look that they, they made this funny joke, and they did that, and this, and this and that and this and that and it's like like I liked Matt from the very beginning Matt Bragg uh, Matt you know I, he seems like a cool dude all right um, and for the most part I don't regret liking those people but um, well the, the big thorn is obviously Ryan Haywood but of course then you realize that there were greater issues at Rooster Teeth as a whole, uh, as we, well, th th there were some cracks in the system you saw uh, over time. How? How he do? Ha! Uh, you saw over time, like, um, the big one was, well, it's not the big one, it's one of the first big ones I would describe that I remember at least uh, actively hearing about, and uh, Rooster Teeth itself having to address it, and even the no having to address it on uh, in a video, and then being like, listen, we know we have to talk about this, and we will, but we won't go in depth into it because, well, this is a conflict of interest. No matter how you look at it, no matter how we describe it, and I'm sp uh, speaking now about uh, Crunch uh, and stuff during uh, Crunch, especially in, uh, in the animation department. Um, this would have been during volume. I want to say volume five of Ruby, which is after the the, the volume after which I, I dropped Ruby for a really long time. Uh, for what's worth, I've have I've dropped it for many volumes at this point. Uh, since I did watch the next one or two volumes after a certain while, because I heard they got better, and I did, but not better enough to warrant everything else. But this is around volume five that um, uh, it came out just how horrible the crunch and everything was at the animation department, and I think it was I. Th I think at the time it was Matt Hollum that was in charge, if I'm wrong I'm gonna put a roll correction in here. But he was in charge of the department and he had to step down, um, but he, well, stepped down, he didn't leave the company, he, like, stepped down from that specific uh, position, is, is how I recall that happening. Ooh, more diamonds. More diamonds. Um, and, uh... Yeah, it, it, it was a horrible, horrible thing where they were massively overworking and stretching that department so thin. They had uh, Rooster, uh, they had, sorry, Ruby, they had uh, Genlock, they had Camp Camp, they had Nomad of Nowhere or whatever it was called. And man, imagine being the Rooster Teeth employee getting like. Uh, this huge horrible crunch and terrible pay and stretching so thin across so many projects to put out fucking Genlock. Oh man, oh man. 
that must that must sting with hindsight so badly. But that was like the first big issue where I saw Disgust and I was like, okay, something about this company is isn't quite as amazing and it's not as uh, this beautiful, wonderful beacon of creativity and good vibes and like wonderfulness that I had I'll essentially just imagined, frankly, in my head. Uh, it was one of those companies alongside... It, it, uh, growing up, I will tell you right in the way that there were multiple, like, uh, channels and companies where I was like, man, I hope one day I can work here, I can work specifically at Rooster Teeth. Before that, oh man, I hope one day I can go to Yogg Towers and work there, and it's like... As you grow up, you're like, well, maybe I just... Maybe I just actually don't, though. <laughs> Maybe I actually don't want to do that and just instead want to do content with people I actually know and are fr and I'm friends with and it's like nah nah you want to live in a you want to live in an office you want to live in an office and uh, and work with complete strangers that's what you want to do but no um, what resort Cal computer I I definitely passed this cave at some point in my previous adventures and. Missed the fact there was Lord Calcum right here. Um, but yeah, this was the first time when I'm like, ah, uh, maybe actually, maybe actually I don't, maybe I want to like do my own thing or like look at some other stuff, but not, not go to Austin, Texas to work at Rooster Teeth when I grow up. Uh, that was the first time. And then after that, some really bad times started piling up. Um, you know, it's too many big details. Like the big, the big fallout was, of course, uh, the Haywood Haywood slash Kovic situation. And there are two parts to the Kovic situation, especially. So, well, two parts to both actually. One part was um, where was the staircase? There was a staircase I mined out somewhere in this location. <clears throat> but I don't remember where. Let me just keep looking. There it is. Um, for those that you, of you that don't know, uh, this happened in insert year here, <laughs> where essentially um, there was a double whammy at uh, Rooster Teeth, which was Ryan Haywood from Achievement Hunter and uh, Adam Kovic from Funhouse both got accused of some pretty nasty stuff, um, allegedly, uh, 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 um, in the case of, okay, I'm gonna, uh, basically explain it as best as I can from, uh, like, a, as a little short timeline, uh, of how I remember things coming out and people learning about them. There was essentially a, um, there were two things that happened at once. One, there were accusations being uh, made against Ryan uh, on Twitter, and there was some stuff that came originally, I believe, from 4chan, and then tr uh, went over to Twitter and all other social media about Adam Kovic from Funhouse. Uh, the stuff about Ryan was that uh, he was accused of, essentially grooming uh, fans, cheating on his wife, uh, having sex with fans uh, during, uh, like, conventions, um, uh, like, n just nasty things, um, nasty things there. Uh, there were accusations both of uh, grooming and just straight up uh, Predate, predating, like being predator uh, towards like actual underage fans, straight up. Um, some very, very uncomfortable details about the actual acts themselves. Oh, there's a vampire baron. Okay, die, bitch. Poison, just die. Um, and could you just? 
How much? There we go. Okay, interesting. Um, it's very unfortunate timing for actual Minecraft to for actual Minecraft to take place. Sanguinaire, man. Weird. But yeah, that started coming out, uh, and in parallel uh, from what happened on 4chan was that. Oh, apparently Kobik got um, catfished, uh, sent nudes of himself and his uh, partner and like uh, other stuff to this person on the internet. Um, apparently he had even done some acts at the Funhouse offices, like in a bathroom or something like that. And people were like, okay, that's fucked up. Um, and he deserves to be fired and all that, uh, and of course, no, none of his co-workers would want to work with that person anymore after he would do that something like that in the freaking office. Um, but was, what was happening was at the time that, because these two accusations had come out essentially at once, at the exact same time, what would happen is that people would conflate the accusations being put against Ryan Haywood uh, and slap them on to Adam Kovic. And at the time, I will straight up tell you, I was someone who was annoyed that, by that because, well, there was nothing we knew about uh, Kovic, which was nearly as heinous. You know, it, it, it was very much a case of, well, it sounds like he has a genuine issue and should take a mental health break, get off the internet, and seek, like, Help. He needed to seek help, essentially. Uh, that was the um, immediate thought. Now, that was what was happening immediately. There were people, however, from uh, Rooster Teeth, both uh, uh, employees at the time, such as Alana, uh, and former employees like Lawrence Sontag, who were, and uh, guests like Raul Coley, who were basically saying some very vague stuff on. Twitter, which was like, oh, finally something's happened, finally, blah, 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 like, um, you guys don't know what's happening behind the scenes or something like that, and at that point, that also kind of annoyed me because it was like, well, why the hell, why are you, like, stoking the fire here if something has actually happened that is genuinely necessary to talk about? Why aren't people actually fucking talking about it? Um, and and if there hasn't been anything like that instead, and it's like, it's genuinely just, um... It is just a case of... Uh, exaggeration, well then, and like, the, the accusations, because again, the accusations at the time weren't, um... There were two, uh, sort of, two lines of accusation. One was, which seemed to have some basis in reality, which was what we actually saw about the catfishing stuff, and then the accusations which were just, uh, seemed to be uh, conflating... Uh, one moment, excuse me. Check in recording. Wow, I've been recording for a while. <laughs> which seemed to be conflating the things that Ryan did with the things that uh, Kovic did. And... Again, at the time... No torches. For a sec. Oh, if only these fucking torches actually worked. Hate this mod. Um, that seemed to be the case, but again, they would, people were implying there was something more, but without anyone ever saying anything, I sort of just brushed it off. As a result, uh, well, uh, when Haywood came back, uh, tried to come back on Twitch, he was absolutely fucking destroyed for it. Uh, because he deserved to be, because he's he's an asshole, he was a piece of shit. Uh, and, and frankly, kind of a fucking monster. That was... That was the part of that whole thing that really genuinely hurts. Was uh, when Jack and Michael did a video, and you actually heard... Heard them describe Ryan as a monster. They said they were sitting next to a monster this whole time for years while they worked, and they just had no fucking idea. Um, but that was uh, Haywood's case. Meanwhile, Kobe came back, uh, he came uh, back with Aaron Marquis, 
in um, in this thing called Null and Void, which was sort of their collaborative project because they came out with a book. It's called Rook, right? Um, and they started a podcast uh, where they would talk about just like pretty important things I would say at the time like that's that's how I felt about it and that's why I enjoyed it they were very real but they were also funny and things like that um, and I felt fine supporting this and supporting Kobik and even uh, joined the patreon at some point because I, I, I liked I, I liked what uh, Kobik put out I liked I, I liked Aaron Marquis when he was still part of Brewster Teeth and they would they would talk as openly as they could about issues at places like uh, Rooster Teeth. And... They did. But then, after some time, I noticed, oh, the channel is gone? And I don't remember any kind of announcement about it. And, of course, then I got, at some point, notified about the fact that more shit had come out about Kovic. And not just about Kovic, but it had come out about Rooster Teeth and their HR department in the fact that Kovic had been a sex pest for an extremely long time and he had been harassing people, he would harass interns, he would harass co-workers in general, guests um, who would just be weirdly sexual at the office and this was a very open thing, this, this is uh, at some point, uh, not only the people harassed, but uh, Bruce also tried to uh, contact HR about it, and they basically either laughed off or brushed away these complaints uh, with the thought that, uh, bas clearly because they thought that Kovic as an on-screen personality was more important than uh, doing the right fucking thing and stopping someone who was asexual, essentially a sexual predator, working at their uh, at their company. And then you sort of also have to wonder, well, how many people, especially at HR, might have known about Ryan? And it's like, well, okay, let's not jump too far, let's not exaggerate, maybe this is just one-time thing, maybe just one time the HR department fucked up this badly, it was a fluke. But then you'll learn about the stuff that um, Caden went through. And this, this is the straw that broke camel's back that's kind of completely shattered my image of Rooster Teeth, this company that had been a huge part of my growing up. Uh, I, I was so into Ruby, I was so into Achievement Hunter. Even after the whole Ryan thing, I was like, I still love the rest of these people. I love their content, they're so funny, I'm, and I, I, still, I still greatly... Um, Greatly admire and enjoy some of them, like Jack. I, I genuinely believe Jack doesn't have a mean bone in his freaking body, right? Um, and I think all, overall they've all grown as people, but it still showed that even at the earliest time, there were still huge problems. Like um, the the Caden this the Caden stuff. Uh, essentially, Caden uh, when um, when Caden joins, uh, I, I, I'm gonna avoids any pronouns except they here because I don't want to make an error. I don't remember currently exactly how this is. I believe uh, Kanan is a uh, uh, trans femme, but I don't genuinely remember. But the time they joined Rooster Teeth and Achievement Hunter, uh, they uh, they still identified as male, uh, as, a, as a gay man. That was their identity at the time. Um, and it's like, okay, cool, but Rooster Teeth is like a progressive company and they must have been fine with it and everything. Well, yes, but at the same time, um, uh, Caden had a nickname, uh, which showed up a lot in Achievement Hunter videos. It was something that uh, Jeff used a lot, Gavin used a lot. Uh, I don't re actually genuinely don't remember <clears throat> like Jack ever saying it. Maybe he, ever, maybe he did, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but the nickname was... Uh, Thugs. That nickname has no other meaning other than as a replacement for a slur they could not put into the videos. Genuinely, the, uh, the nickname Caden had at the company at the time was the F-slur, right? Uh, I, I, 
mind you, I uh, myself, I am bi, and I am not uh, using the term, not because out of any like, ooh, I, I can't say the word, ah, no, it's just because it's fucking YouTube. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to deal with having said that on YouTube and then they're getting on my ass about it. But it was literally just the slur, and that's it. There was no other meaning to it. That alone wouldn't be. It, it's already bad. Okay, it wouldn't be as bad though if one HR again didn't fucking do anything about it and uh, Kanan didn't continue to receive harassment that at their place of work constantly throughout this whole thing and then when they came out as trans uh, Rooster Teeth tried to capitalize on that shit and being like look, look, we got a trans person here despite the fact that they suffered harassment for years beforehand um, and the other thing that makes it really heinous is that I don't know I don't know who came up with the nickname at Achievement Hunter who's decided to use it into videos and uh, just keep going with it but whoever did that tricked the fucking fan base in using the nick into using the nickname and essentially referring to Caden with a slur. And it's like Jesus Christ. Actually just pretty despicable if I'm being completely honest. Okay, um uh, I I'm uh, I, I guess it, it could have been more bleak. This video could have been way more bleak than it was. I'm, I'm sorry. Also, I guess I've been recording long enough that this is going to be split into two videos in any way, and then I'm going to be talking about some some more lighthearted stuff, like creepypasta about children murdering each other. Uh, and, and, you know, the time someone uh, a child actually tried to murder someone in the next video. <laughs> Which I'm probably not going to be recording right now, I'm probably going to be uh, doing that next episode. As you can see, I didn't actually make that much progress. I didn't find any... Uh, I didn't find any adamantium or any atlers, which is annoying. <laughs> not a lot of progress towards Tartarite, uh, but we did get... Uh, how many? Six more Orichalcum, I think? Oh yeah, six more Orichalcum. Meaning that it that could eventually at least make Orichalcum armor maybe go into the nether a bit more. Like if we check some swords, because the, the Tartar sword is the one I really, Tartarite sword is really uh, the one I want. But you know, we can get something like Sanguinite I think is in the nether, or Vulcanite. Uh, like Adler is 8 damage, Animantine is 8 damage, Orichalcum is 7 damage, so like and Viroxery is 7 damage, like, if we could maybe get Sanguinite, that would be really pretty good, right? That's going to be for next episode, uh, when I'm also going to be tackling mostly the creepy trader stuff. Oh, wait, shoot, it's going to be gone, isn't it? Well, maybe I'll record on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah.